two-way tables, despite how sort of ordinary they seem to be, are actually key to helping work out when people are lying to you. Let me give you an example, okay? All right, so someone tell me who we're looking at, please. Oh, you guys, you guys. Okay, so this is, um, this is Reggie Miller, okay? Reggie Miller. Now, I'm, I'm low-key disappointed that no one got his name because, okay, I know Michael Jordan is one of the most famous people of all time, but both Miller and Jordan in the NBA All-Stars Hall of Fame, all that kind of thing, right? Now, they were both renowned for their accuracy, their shot accuracy, okay? And I want to ask the question, well, who was more accurate, okay? Now, most people would assume, okay, Michael Jordan, but I want to see if I can push on that assumption. Let's think about it this way, okay? You want to understand accuracy. Um, you want to break down the numbers, right? So, of course, on, in a normal game of basketball, there's two different kinds of shots you can take. There's two-pointers, and then there's three-pointers, right? If you're inside the circle, semicircle, two points. If you're outside, it's three, right? I'm not going to count free throws because I'm kind of like, you know, I'm just going to put that to one side, partly because I don't think they count, partly also because I didn't have data about them. Okay, now, that aside, shh, have a look at these numbers for a second. Now, I don't know about you, but the first time I saw these numbers, just on paper, I was like, really? Like, he's just barely breaking half, right? Like, that's not, that doesn't sound that impressive, but actually when you think about it, of course, when you're comparing who he's playing up against, these are very, very impressive numbers. Okay, there are a few people, there are a few people who can get even close to a comparison with this. Okay, however, the reason why I've put Reggie Miller on here is because he is one of those people. Oh. Here are Miller's numbers. Go. Now, now, just have a look at this. Okay, now this is this is we've got this out of their historical data. Okay, now we'll, we'll we'll come to we'll come to how this came about, but let's dig into this first. Look at the numbers on the face of it. For me, they look pretty clear, don't they? They look pretty clear. They're understandable. Um, they're not. It's not massive margins, particularly on your two pointers, um, but they they are margins nonetheless. Do you agree? And in fact, on the three pointers, that that's I think that's an impressive difference, yeah. right? So. This is a big deal. How can we understand whether this claim is legitimate or not? Okay. Well, let's push on this a little more and use the tool that we've been talking about today. Right? Let's break this down by way of a two-way table because there's actually a lot hiding underneath these percentages. Okay? How do you get a percentage like 52%? Where does that come from? What do you think that means? The amount of shots he's made out of the total amount of shots he's made. Very good. So it's the number of shots that he successfully gets in the hoop versus the total number of shots that he takes, right? So we would call them, the ones he gets in, we call them goals. All of the shots that he takes, we just call them shots, right? So if you have a think about goals versus shots, over time, what they've done is they've actually done a comparison rather than over, like, adding up every single one. They had a look per game. Can I say that again? Because these numbers are going to confuse you otherwise. They had a look per game how many shots each player took and then how many they actually sank. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's have a look at some of Miller's numbers. What does this mean? In an average game, in an average game, Miller takes 7.9 shots from inside. On an average game, right? So one game he takes seven, the next game he takes 10, the next game he takes two, they average it all out. Does that make sense? Um, this is career-wise, actually, the whole thing, okay? So 7.9 is how many he takes on average, 4.1 is how many he gets. So do you see where the 52% comes from? Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Here are his numbers on three-pointers. Okay, three-pointers. Everything so far so good. Okay. Now, before I show you the next few numbers, I do want to mention I'm asking out who's more accurate. There's no argument who scored more points overall. Michael Jordan just wipes the floor with everyone. Okay. So these numbers are going to be bigger, but I'm interested in accuracy. Yeah. Have a look at Jordan's numbers now. Okay. So immediately you can see he takes many, many more shots. Many more shots. Okay. Interestingly, he doesn't take nearly as many from the three-pointer. Anyone want to tell me why? Too risky. Say it again, Tom. Too risky. Uh, it's too risky, right? And also, a player like Jordan, he can just he can just drive in there. He's so good at doing that, and you can do that over and over again. So the risk reward is not worth it. Okay. So he actually takes fewer three-pointers. Okay. Now, 
come back to this example here. What did we do with this that enabled us to make some sense of this? Well, we didn't actually write it because I kind of like skipped over it, right? But this 2.6% came from not 26 divided by like these whole numbers. It was 26 divided by a specific number. Did you notice that? We stayed within the condition. So this is 26 divided by 988, right? And this one here was, what was that? 7 divided by 750, yes? Okay. So the power of a two-way table is it sort of unpacks within these categories, there's more going on. So let me show you what's going on. Actually, I'll, I'll do better than that. I want you to help me. You've got the numbers here. You've got calculators there. Can you go ahead? And I'm interested in the total number of actual goals that each player sank per game and the total number of actual shots that they sank per game. Can I give you about 60 seconds? You can work with the person next to you so you don't have to do all the numbers. Just calculate them and please write them down. I actually want you to write down Miller's total shots versus goals and then Jordan's total shots versus goals. I need you to write it down. You'll see why in a second. Can I get another show of hands now? Um, who's done with the four numbers? Hands up. This is the addition. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you, hands down. Alright, so let me help you out. Or actually, let me ask you, did you get these numbers? Yes. Is that what you got? Yes, sir. Okay, now the reason I asked you to write these numbers down is so that we can do this same kind of calculation, right? Because now I've got totals to compare against. I've got totals. The total accuracy should be the total number of actual goals scored versus the total number of shots per game. Does that make sense? You can divide them and you can get percentages just like these. Go ahead and do it. And then as soon as you've calculated those two percentages, they're percentages now, just, just give me a nod. You've got it? Yep, okay. Anyone else? Do the calculation, get the percentages. That's what I'm after. Tavar, have you calculated them yet? Oh, no. I'm looking for these percentages. Turn a number of goals over turn a number of shots per game for both players. Many of you have already arrived at these numbers yourselves, but some of you haven't, so pens out of hands, calculators down, just look with me, okay? If you go ahead and you calculate, you can see it's close, can't you? Ready? I'm waiting for eyes up. Just almost there. Very good. These are the actual totals. Right? And you're like, wait a second. Just wait a second. Jordan is down on both numbers compared to Miller. But somehow you add everything, and you go ahead, double check, triple check, right? Jordan's in front, right? Which is, you know, understandably why he's so happy. How can this be? Okay, now this is actually really important. I'd like you to write this down. You can research it later. Um, this phenomenon has a name. It's called, this is the thing I want you to write down. It's called Simpson's Paradox. Simpson's Paradox. Now, this is weird. When people see it for the first time, when I saw it the first time, I was like, but how, how can that make sense? How can you get two lower numbers, add them together, and somehow get a bigger number? Okay, I'll show you. Just look carefully at this for a second. It takes a second to absorb what's going on. Okay, so here's a big data set. Okay, now if you have a look at the big, the whole data set, what you can see is this downward trend. Yeah, you can see the downward trend from top left to bottom right. Okay, but if you then take a subset carefully within the data, you can see that each of those five subsets that they color independently, they've got upward trends. Do you see that? I'll say that one more time. The whole data set has a clear downward trend. But then if you cherry pick correctly and you pick your subcategories in a clever way, you can actually make the data look like it's saying the opposite. In fact, the other name for this is um, the reversal paradox. Okay? Now this is what I mean by people lying to you with numbers. If you had a look back at all of this, right? remember the first few numbers I showed you? Looked pretty clear, didn't it? Yeah. Looked pretty clear? The two-way table was the tool we could use to actually unpack what on earth is going on how am I actually having the wool pulled over my eyes? All I need to do to trick you is to pick the right subset of data and only show you that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 